Hello, hello everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, thanks for thanks for sticking around. Uh, and also hi to the new faces in our chat. Um, we are playing a game called Microscope Chronicle, which is a subset or an alternate game of Microscope that was recently released in Ben Robbins Microscope Explorer. Uh, this is a game about a certain thing instead of just a history. It's a history about a thing. And that thing is called the Chronicle. And in our game, our Chronicle is a magical kingdom uh, by the name of Stormguard. Uh, in the break, uh, we saw that there was some sort of like revolution and stuff. And from that revolution and the, the ashes of that conflict rose Silverguard. And uh, from there, um, some things will happen. And there was some sort of magical dueling kind of civilization uh, part of, of society. And then we'll get to our, our, our nation and uh, we'll see whatever else comes from there. Um, the last thing we were doing before before we went to a break was that we were creating a, a our first scene. And uh, we're doing that down here in, in what's called the revolution part of the game, uh, of our period. It's called uh, it's a world of in the midst of turmoil and conflict. Uh, and we're looking at a scene where um, a creator of a tarot deck named Penate has finally um, crafted it maybe and and we'll kind of go from there. Uh, so in the scene in Penate's workshop, uh, we have Baroness Gisadel, uh, Evermoon, who's some sort of elven mage played by me. Um, Desmond, the high champion of light, will be played by Sai, and Penate herself or himself will be played by Adam. And before we begin our scene, the first, uh, the last thing we will do is we all get to share our thought of our character before we begin play. Um, and that go the thought gets shared in the same order of character selection, so that starts with me. And I think Baroness Jezebel, um, I think she wants the deck for the elves, um, for their for for guidance of, of their um, of their people, in in during the uh, the revolution. They uh, they need they need the deck to guide them on what side to to um, throw their power behind. That's what I'm thinking. Right. So what what's Desmond yeah. thinking? I was actually thinking of this over the break. I think Desmond is probably more sort of skeptical of Penate's work. Mm -hmm. Like, he's probably the type of guy who thinks that we shouldn't dabble in the ways of the fates. We just stick to but, good old fashioned magic. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we don't need. Back in no my day, magic. all we had was yeah. fireball. We don't need no fortune tellers to show us how to cast magic missile. <laughs> but, we fire that. We fire that magical uh, that magic missile of the darkness, and we liked it. <laughs> right. yeah. but, uh, at awesome. the same time. I think that he the reason he's here in this scene because he knows he knows that uh what Penate is working on is going to shift the world in a certain way. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. And what's Penate thinking? Adam? Um I think she's aware probably that she's in the midst of people who are very interested in the deck and not in her own best interests. Um, she, she sure, my mouth just fused together. Um, she wants to like spread the deck like throughout as much of the world as she can. Like she she wants to like release the deck and have it seen by people and used by magic users and stuff like that. Okay. She she doesn't know what these people are trying to do with it, mm -hmm. like claim it for the elves or whatever. Uh, she's pretty wary of that. Um, I think her fear, because I like to go with fear. Um, I think her fear motivated. is that. Yeah, I I think so. I it invades my everything role playing games. Um, she's afraid that 
her work is going to be taken and used for a purpose that she didn't originally intend it for, which was the pure purpose of just it being a divination deck. Okay. Cool. Um, so I think... Uh... I'm not sure if if Desmond is is here yet, but um I think I think Penate's probably in her workshop. Um maybe doing the last touches on the deck or something like that. And I think we see sort of like a a blue like crackling portal of magic kind of like open up in her in her room. Like maybe maybe like it starts with sort of like a you know, like the 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 sensation of a storm, like the the pressure in the air changes. Like you get that sensation of like a storm's coming, and then yeah. like use like the wind picks up and like a spiral kind of you know like cyclone kind of thing, and then like turns blue, and like like from from like a the center point of of like the the, the vortex, and then it like turns into like a portal, and out steps um this like immaculately dressed um you know like epic gear looking elf, um from from WoW, um. And and she she looks over and she's very snobbish. Um, she 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 looks over the place. She's like, hmm, what a crude place. Hmm, I have expected this that this was a cave. Yeah. Where is Desmond? And I say that like out loud, like looking around. He's like, he was supposed to be here with me around at the same time. Is she expecting? penetate to answer or is she just kind of talking to herself I'm, I'm talking to herself um it's i have the impression i don't know it's it's up to you you can assume if this was unannounced an unannounced visit or an announced visit uh, um i play, I play think, it however however you want and then ross will see how desmond enters the scene i think i'm not in control of the details of who's going to show up when okay because i feel like i just are. But yeah, you can totally I, do that. But, but when I say <laughs> when, when I say I, I mean Penate. Okay. Yeah. All right. Penate hasn't arranged this event. She okay. was just yeah. like, so this is an unexpected. So me. Look at it. Yeah, Spike Spike Flaw in chat says she looks out from between her four foot long pauldrons. It's totally true. <laughs> uh, they have such a fetish for those giant shoulder guards. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. What uh totally. You there. Girl. Pointing to, to Penate. I like all uh, my my staff to her. Uh Penate's probably like Desmond's not here yet. I don't know what you want me to do about that. Um is Penate like what kind of social class is Penate? Um, I get the feeling that she's um, she's on the cusp between lower and middle class. Sure, this is some like an apartment building or something. Yeah, a starving artist. Yeah, a starving yeah. artist. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ah, obviously he's not here yet. Where is that pesky mage? And it's about that time that I think that Desmond knocks on the door to your workshop. <laughs> I, I look at Penate. Fancy yeah. teleportation stuff. I, lo- I looked at Penate and like Go see if it's him. I, I, I look at I looked at Penate because like I'm not going to go get the door. <laughs> I I'm just like It's your house. <laughs> I probably have like thinking to myself a paintbrush uh, in my hand, and I'm like, "Okay, fine, whatever." I, no, I love I love that picture. I love the idea of you holding uh, a paintbrush while I'm like holding like a giant magical staff. <laughs> uh, yeah, the parallels are real. Yeah, awesome. Um, so I put that down, and I walk. I like adjust my own chair out, like kind of catty corner to the side and Penate walks to the door and opens it up and she just opens it wide and lets whoever's there comes in because she presumes that people are coming here to see um, the deck being finished. Right. So she's just like 
Whoever wants to come in, great. More people to so observe who, this work of beauty. Mm-hmm. Who um who comes in? Is it is it Desmond? I yeah, assume it's Desmond because you were knocking yeah. the door, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Totally. Ah, Desmond, you're here. Uh, fashionably late, I presume. What does Desmond look like? Desmond is I mean, just... probably a middle-aged man, probably in his late thirties. Sure. I mean, is, is he is he like middle What is he? What is like, a what is a high champion of light dress going to, to going to Penate? I mean, you don't mm-hmm. have to get like super detail, just in general. He's right? probably is not... he wearing like plate mail? Mm-hmm. Is he wearing like Gandalf clothes? Like you know, what is he? Mm-hmm. He's kind of getting an idea. Yeah, I would say that he has some sort of like sort of cloak that he wears. Nothing too fancy, right? Oh, okay. Yeah. So even better. So I was even more snarky. Uh, yeah. Hmm. I would I would suggest that uh that l- our our host offer some some tea, but I doubt you would want to drink whatever uh container she has available around here. This place is filthy. Uh, I like hold up like a a thing full of like paint mixed with water. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, you don't want to drink this. I uh, like and I I I snap my this fingers. This is my workshop, not my yeah. kitchen. I like I like snap my fingers and like a magical like kettle like comes out. <laughs> like I like gets summoned from the ether and like pours like two sure. hovering cups of of tea. And uh, I, I I grab both of them and I grab I put one to Desmond and I looked and I I hold my own. I look to to uh, Penate and I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. Did you want one? <laughs> I'm being a total dick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, and I'm holding like my cup of like, like dirty. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I you no, already I'm had a drink. Fine. You already had a drink. I... <laughs> Clearly. But, uh, <laughs> so Desmond will sort of just walk in, hang up his cloak wherever. Yeah. And just sort of walk over to the to the table where Penate is working. I'll take the drink, because why not? Sure. But won't make a ceremony about it. And I'll just sort of ask, uh, how's the deck coming? So, oh. Oh, forgive me, you are Penate. I just assumed you were her servant. I, I wasn't expecting you to not have... Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 I like graciously bow. I, so I'm sorry. I just, I just assumed you would be more fortunate <laughs> looking around. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm probably going to be. I'm probably going to like brush that off and continue with that conversation but i kind of want to cut to um like the point where everyone who is going to come to this event sure is gathered together because this event is me painting the entire last um card okay Okay. So like, well, I don't yeah, even they, have, like, and so it, and so it was. It happens. So everyone else is here. Uh, now the whole place is crowded uh, with sure. with dignitaries of different kinds, I suppose. Yeah. Politicians and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think I ask some someone to be quiet in kind of like a a voice that doesn't command a crowd, but somebody who does have a voice like echoes and like it enforces it more for me probably. And <laughs> like sorry, there are, there are people allowed outside our apartment. Uh, Darcy will enforce the silence. Brought a dog into the workshop. <laughs> Thank you. Um. So she, there's just going to be like this long stretch of silence as, um, as like pencil goes to like this huge canvas because I'm making these to be sort of mass produced. Mm -hmm. So they're just kind of like meant to be copied by other artists. That makes sense. Yeah. 
I, right, you're not like, making an actual, that... like, normal-sized deck of cards. You're making, like, the key, sort of, where other yeah. artists can reproduce your deck of cards. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Totally. Um, so, like, I can probably add to the scene that there's, like, a bunch of canvases, like, tilted against the walls, sure. which are the other, like, hundreds of cards in this deck. Oh, okay. Because I wanted it to be more complex than the original one. Yeah, this is the expansion pack. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> totally. The deck um, of many things, Haro. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there's like this long stretch of silence. And um, there's sketching and painting. And um, I think... I'm wondering, like, what the name of the final card I create is. Name it. Yeah, I got to name it. You have the power. Uh huh. I think I'm gonna call it the Cavern's Crystal. Okay. Awesome name. Ooh. Great job. Mystical. And it's this. <laughs> this like i've got i'm like on board with all of the props today (laughs) okay it's like with this picture of like an inverted like i'm not sure why i said inverted it's like a stalactite so okay but just made of like quartz okay like just like a bundle of quartz. sure okay i can i picture what you're saying (laughs) and stalactites are the one that point downwards Yeah. yeah Okay. I was about to say inverted stalactite, and, and I was going to be like, <laughs> right. stalagmite. Wait, wait. yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. It's like an upside down well. stalagmite. Sure. I don't know what so, to call um, that. <laughs> so you, you finish it, and um, I think I think the Baroness like erupts in, a, in applause and, and says, like, it is beautiful. This is one of the most beautiful pieces I've ever seen. I must have it for the Elven Lands. Name your price. And come on, out with it. I think she's willing to be sold off, actually. <laughs> um, what is it that you that you wish? Um, I think she wants to be situated in the Elven Lands. Because that's always where she wanted to be, and she wants to be in a much better station than she's in right now, and she wants to be in a position where she can keep, um, because she's an artist at heart. She's not just like um. I just want to paint, paint and a chill. Designer. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Okay. Um, she wants to set up her medieval Patreon account. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Um, I I think I think. The Baroness is, is, is shocked at how easy an offer that is. Um, in fact, I don't think she can even like with like withhold face of being like, hmm, that was a good deal. Like she's like, hmm. Well, and then I'm gonna finish it off. With, but with it comes the price that you are eliminating a card in the deck that is meant to be there. Unless must... you agree to allow the people who will reproduce this deck to copy from it very well they may copy it as long as the elves maintain the originals then it's a deal Desmond and I'll just sort of uh, look between the two and see if this deck of cards is indeed as powerful as you designed it to be see that that power is not misplaced misplaced power that's all this revolution has ever seen is misplaced power uh with this deck we'll finally reveal the 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 end uh, of it and perhaps civilization can return to you humans desmond just or the, sort of the human kingdom the human or this kingdom i, I don't want to say humans because 
like human everyone lives in mixes stuff right so right. This, this is just another land uh this is another kingdom i don't i don't know what it is but you know whatever desmond will um, just sort yeah. of wave off the same and be like a we shall see kind of thing we shall see okay um I think does that that answers the scene, doesn't it? Yeah. Um. Yes. Well, it consists of of her of Penate's paintings, and how's it shape its users? Um. Well, it's shaped the elves getting the original copies. Yeah. And now they have a a, a way to, or in whatever that country is, a, a way to survive the revolution, or capitalize mm-hmm. on it. They have sort of a leg up on this new form of divination yeah sell out (laughs) yeah (laughs) and I think we also answered that um it's got a bunch of cards in it. Oh, so. Yeah. yeah, it's got a ton of cards in it. The kind of people it attracts are probably the elves since they live pretty long and have, like, the time to, like, master this deck. Awesome. Okay. Um, right, so not only do the elves have access to it first, they also have a leg up on understanding. Is this scene? Yeah. So the last thing we do for this scene is, um, is this light or dark? Light? Or this is a voting thing. This is subjective. Whatever, whatever we want to call it. Tricky question. Definitely is tricky because, in some perspectives, it's (laughs) you know it's a just make a choice. It's a very light thing for the elves, but it could forebode bad things in the future. I think it's light. I mean, Penate got what she wanted too, right? That's yeah. true. Most of the characters in the scene got what they wanted. Spike mom. pretty much completely. Yeah, Spike. I think it's I think it's light overall. Yeah. Light for sure. Spike Mall asks, How's this event remembered? Is Penate remembered as a traitor, selling it to the elves? We shall see. We Ooh. will definitely see. Intrigue. Yep. Um cool. So that was you were creating the masterpiece, uh, Adam. So now it goes to to Psy. You get to create a period, event, or a scene, uh, as long as it has something to do with creating a masterpiece. Creating a masterpiece. Okay, I'm starting to get a feel how this game works. So our focus right now is creating a masterpiece, and every pass we change up the focus. Uh Uh-huh. Hmm. Let me look at the timeline and see what see what looks interesting. Hmm. Okay, I think I think I have an idea. Okay. So we can kind of like moving forward, I guess, in the timeline to where we had the uh, events earlier with uh, Asaris. Okay, so un- under the Sundering. Yeah, under the Sundering. And we had uh, one of the... Uh, events as the people of Silverguard beginning to see him as a leader. Yes. And I feel like, I don't know, I feel like there might be a scene somewhere in there, but I'm not quite sure. Okay. Um, you don't have to make a scene if, if you're not sure. You can make another event, but the event has to do with Essers. Hmm. And it has to do with creating a masterpiece. Yeah. Perhaps describe what you're thinking, and and we can guide you. Okay, so 
Hmm. So right now, sort of after the revolution, the people of Silverguard are like they have they've won their independence through revolution, but now they're a little sort of poor off, sort of recovering from the war. Mm-hmm. And I feel like if the people look towards Asaris as a leader, then he might try to sort of start building up the town and getting people to rally to their cause. Okay. And that can tie into him creating a sort of his version of a masterpiece in the uh, people. So... Uh, in other words, then Esseris, uh he he does. Um, what's so his masterpiece is that he's a leader to the people. Like he shapes the people into his. Yeah, he help starts me word to. This. Yeah. Yeah, he starts to uh, view himself as a leader of the people and turns the uh, sort of town of Silverguard into this like masterpiece idolization of what they want and what their ideals are. Um, if you so have a word for that. In, uh, I'm saying uh, Ezra's hero ship uh, inspires the common people to unite and uh, build up the town of Silverguard. Does that help? Is that what you mean? Yeah. I say her- hero ship. Mm-hmm. What the hell is that? Heroism. Yeah, heroism. There we go. <laughs> I have no idea where that came from. Um, okay. Uh, I'm just, I, I like to say that cause only because I want to reiterate. I, I don't mind trying to steal what you're trying to say. I'm just trying to write it in a way that makes sense. Um, right. I'm terrible with wording, so feel free. Okay. Great. Um, totally, totally cool with that. Yep. Um,. I will make so a scene. So I think the oh. scene that we see. Oh no! I'm sorry. You don't. There, you don't get to. You don't making. Uh, you don't get to make a scene. Um, okay. Only, only the the focus, like the focus, or, or excuse me, only the lens, um, on their turn oh, gets to do the I double see. tap. Everybody else gets gets to do one thing. I see. But I will make a dictated scene under that because you didn't explain it. Um, Feel free to. My question is, um, what is the monument? Uh, made in uh, Esser's honor uh, in the town square. It's a good question. Uh, the scene is that uh, we are in the town square, um, and there's a giant like monument of some kind shrouded in a, in a you know crazy huge cloth or whatever. Um, yeah. This is a dictated scene, so I just get to describe it because um, I have an answer. Um, so we see, uh, Azarus, like, kind of go to a platform of some kind near the, uh, maybe circling the monument, and, um, you see him, like, waving, and everybody's, like, cheering to him and stuff like that, and he's smiling and stuff like that, and, like, uh, he's like, ladies and gentlemen, behold my, uh, behold your, your, your thanks made into, into everlasting stone. Uh, forged from from the stars themselves, uh, rev- uh, I I proudly display uh, and, and um, there's like a drum roll, and uh, the the curtain goes down, and there is a um, giant uh, what what do we call it a stalactite. Made of crystal. Yeah, yeah. Like is it was that a stalactite? It's like crystal? called the yeah. cavern crystal the or something yeah. like that. It, yeah, it is a, uh, but it's fundamentally a stalactite. Yeah, it is a, it is a magnificent uh, giant cavern crystal uh, in the middle of the town. Is it like um, a a giant geode with one side open, or what are you thinking? I was think I you described it as a giant stalactite made of quartz or some kind something like that. Yeah. So I imagine it was something like this. Uh, only it clearly is not quartz. It's made of some sort of much more durable uh, exotic material. 
but it is in the shape and, and style of, of the famous um, yeah. thing from Penate's uh, divination stuff. Sure. Right. The finest material Silver God has to offer. Yes. This is a light scene. Cool. And now we go back to Adam. Adam, you are, since you are the focus, or excuse me, you are the lens, um, you get to, every, uh, every lens gets to go twice. Like, they start the turn and they end the turn. So you get to do your double tap thing again, if you want. Sure. Um, we haven't explored the reign of Silver and Blood that much, so... Um, Silver Guard's first tyrant ruler who receives the city with the cruel fist. Um, so that's just a period, and I don't have to make the event about that period. I can just do something within that period, correct? Um, if you're trying to do something in the period of the Reign of Silver and Blood, you would have to make an event. Yeah, okay. Um, but you're the lens right now, so you but can as, double yeah. tap and make an event end scene. Correct. <laughs> I didn't want it to be about the tyrant, really. Okay, that's fine. I, well, I wanted to focus on, like, the elven stuff. Well, if you make an event um, in the scene, you get to create the anchor, right? Yeah. So the anchor, again, will be... Um, it can be whoever you want it to be, but they have a t they have a tie to the city of, of Silverguard. Sure. Sure. Let's move Eric's face so we can see it. Um, we could go to the very end, but I'm not really into that. Um, yeah, I think I'm going to stay in the Sundering, actually. Okay. Um, I kind of want to see... Um, Oh, also, can I add periods? Oh, or... absolutely, you can add a period. You okay, can add sure. a period and event if you wanted to. Okay, cool. Um, yeah. I, I no one, no one, I, I know, so there's some There's some talk in chat about the tyrant, and there's no, um, while it sits currently to the left, uh, or to its left is the revolution, um, Adam, for instance, could make a new period that goes between the revolution and the reign of silver and blood. They're, they're not directly connected if they don't have to be. It's entirely up to us and how we, we start stringing along things um, for that to actually exist that way. There's right. always but in room the current to put view of the between. timeline, they're pretty close. Yeah, they are. But that doesn't necessarily mean... We that... can change that. Exactly, exactly. It's, it's still amenable. So I think I want to include a period um, where the elves start disappearing, at least the ones, like the sect of elves who got um, Penate's um, divination deck. Sure. Because so I think they're going to start mastering how that deck works. Okay. And, and they're going to use that knowledge to figure out how to ascend from being elves into, like, elven angels, like Azadas, maybe, or something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I dig that. Totally. Okay. So, um, where does this period fall? I love it. Like, the uh, the Age of Elven Ascension or something like that. Yeah, um, that's a perfect name for it. I think it falls between... Neither falls between the revolution and the reign of silver and blood, or between the reign of silver and blood and the sundering. This is entirely subjectively your call to make, my friend. Yeah, exactly. Um, I'm just kind of thinking out loud. I think it comes between the reign of silver and blood and the sundering. Very well. As you command. Just moving things out of the way. Yeah, I so can see it. So we have some space to create. Okay, so you are creating... The Age of Elven Ascension.
elves using um, Penate's um, book. Unlock the secrets to become uh, to shred mortal form. Yeah. It's not shred, shed. <laughs> Sorry. Um, the age of Elven Ascension. Okay, so there's your period. Now Those you... are some weird angels if they're yeah. shredding human forms. <laughs> so now, would you? What do you want to do? Uh, let's create an event during that time. Okay. Um, let's have the event be... You have to create an anchor. Okay, sure. Yeah, I can do that too. Um. The anchor should be whoever is guiding the... Um, elves at this time. Whether it's still um... Oh god, what's her name? Um, Giselle? Whether it's still the Baroness Giselle or her or somebody who comes after her. The anchor, I think, will be them. So and who are they? are going to kind of, yeah. You have, exactly. to, you have to define them. <laughs> you have to make yeah. that call. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, they're directly connected to the city. Yeah. True. Um, let's go with an elven name of some sort. going to make this an old callback to an old Pathfinder campaign I did. Um, this elf's name is Celestral. So like Celestial, but Celestral. Yeah, I'll, leave, I'll leave you up to how you Yep, Celestal. Okay. How you spell that? It doesn't seem like it would have a uh, an I in it. So just Celestal. Mm-hmm. Hang uh, okay. on, I'll be right back one moment. And, sure. And so who Celestal Sel is the um He's the overseer of um the Elven Like homeland, like obviously because it's in our palette, it, it's still intermingled with other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, I think only the elves will ascend. Um, does that count as? I don't know. It feels like you're, you might be. One? Yeah, you're either I don't know. It's it's it feels like you're flirting with with that as well, or and or the monocultures. Well, the, the I I could I could slip by this and justify this a little bit if I. If we all agree, though, I mean, we're not beholden to the palette. If we all agree, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, because like my argument is, elves live an extremely long amount of time, and anyone who would have lived long enough could have. Um, fully comprehended this divination deck and then figured out these secrets like the secrets of immortality that this deck has to offer okay. and stuff like that. So. But since only the elves generally live that long, that's just gonna be how it works out. So are the elves like so I'm going confused. somewhere? Are they migrating or are they staying put? And just becoming better elves. No, it looks like they become like angels. So like they, they don't exist physically. Yeah, that's what I'm going for. So my question for you is that how does Celestal um, 
Overseer of the o Elven Homeland? How does he have a connection to the Magical Kingdom of Silverguard? Um... He... Thank you for the follow, Sram Red. Yeah. I think he... He probably celebrates Silverguard as being the birthplace of Penate. So does he live in Silverguard? Um, or does he just have like a reverence for it? Yeah. I think he just has a reverence for it. So like everything we make has to relate to the Chronicle, right? So right. I'm right. like, I feel like this might the be Chronicle deviating. Is yeah, like we have to make yeah. sure that we're looking at the Age of Elven Ascension as it pertains to the Chronicle. As it pertains to the sure. kingdom, and not not the elves, okay, but sure. the kingdom. Gotcha. Um, I mean, everything you said can still work, but yeah, you know, keep that in mind. I mean, if you need help, I mean, reach out. Yeah, I... I don't really know where to go with this, really. So, mm -hmm. well, I mean, if you're asking for ideas, maybe what I was thinking is because you said that Celestral has a sort of reference reverence for Penante's work and the people of Silverguard, and we have the... Uh, event further down the timeline that of uh, Ezra is creating a masterpiece statue which is in the image of one of Penante's uh, cards the stalagmite maybe the two are connected yeah I mean I'm leaving it up to you I'm just throwing stuff against the wall yeah yeah <laughs> Um, I mean, you can still keep Celestal, right? Yeah. You can still keep him as the overseer of the Elven Homeland, yeah. right? But, like, we we have to focus on yeah, um, exactly. the elves of Silverguard. And what happens to the the mm -hmm. fate of the elves of Silverguard, or what the effect of that is, or on or the effect, yeah, or or the ramifications of of the elves ascending on Silverguard later on. Mm -hmm. In addition, though, yeah. this also has to pertain to the focus, which is creating a masterpiece. Yeah. Um. So, I mean, are we can, are we yeah, keeping, I'm like, I'm like hitting a point of like, this is a little bit like, like I'm about to like X card this. Cause I'm like, this is a little bit too much for me. And I'm just like kind of stalling and I don't know what to do. Oh, that's fine. So that's, that's why you reach out, right? That's totally fine. So we, we're here to help you. Um, yeah. So All right. let's just hitting like major writer's block. Yeah. Then yeah. we are we, are we, let's, let's try to keep the anchor as you suggest, which means all we have to do now is come up with an event, right? All we have to do is come up yeah. with an event in the age of Elven Ascension. Um, that has to deal with the masterpiece. Um, so, uh, what if there's a, um, like a, a, a going away ceremony or something like the last like parade of the elves mm. or something like that? Mm -hmm. Or like, what if, you know, something like that, or or like, what if? Uh, what what is what is the what is the lasting uh, mark on on the world that the elves leave as as they ascend, right? Those types of things. I had an idea for that. Actually, that sounds like it could work. 
So my yeah. idea, which might work, might not work, is that the elves, like you said, are having this like ceremony, like their sort of last sort of thing before the majority of them like ascend. Mm-hmm. And I would say that if that uh, Celestial, because he does have a reference for the people of Silverguard, would uh, share the uh, knowledge that he gathered from Penante's uh, tarot deck, mm. sort of as a going away gift, sort of leave them with that knowledge oh, so to interpret maybe, as they see fit. Maybe, like, the the people who kind of, like... Like, right, because the he's kind like, of like faux, I, faux cultural idea of like owning the tarot deck transfers, right? Back because he's the got this to... like uh, idea of like you people made this, we used it to great effect. We, we have no need of this. You anymore. can have it back. I mean, yes. it's, it's yeah. like the idea that we unlocked a secret where we realized we were selfish and this was like bullshit. So, Sia right. and Nirvana, and, right? Yeah, and they're like, like well, atonement is yeah. They, they're it like, to the yeah, they, like part of their maybe part of their assumption is realizing their selfishness or whatever. And they're like, yeah. oh man, we need to share this with people before we go. Like it's wrong. This, it's wrong to keep this, it for ourselves. This is, looks so interesting too because all before is, um, <laughs> the negative events and. What? So it's like they they've returned guidance to the world or something like that. Yeah. So the celestial so uh, celestial shares the secret knowledge of the uh, tarot deck. Um, with yeah. uh, or maybe not even shares the knowledge. Maybe he just gives them the deck and asks them to interpret it. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, gives uh returns the um returns the original. Yeah. Um, tar- uh, what do we call it? Tarot deck, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Divination deck. However you want to go with that. Um, before uh, ascending. Right. Yep. For gathering and uh, the elves and ascending. Perfect. No, that's awesome, man. That's that. See, that's that's fine. Perfect. You made it work. Yeah. So now, uh, what we do is we go to a legacy, and legacies uh, talk about something that came up during this round, um, and legacies occur in the opposite order of the order of um, how the focus gets transferred. So that means I would be the legacy for this turn. Um, the thing that I want to look at is, um, I'm going to look at Baroness Gisdell. So I'm going to, so I can make an event or a dictated scene um, based on Baroness Jezebel, and I'm going to make an event under the reign of Silver and Blood. I'm going to rotate this over, because you gave me a great idea from that. The anchor of the reign of Silver and Blood will be undoubtedly Baroness Jezebel. The Silver Tyrant. I guess no longer Baroness. Uh, Gisadel, Silver Tyrant. And the event that I create is um, so this doesn't actually have to pertain to the focus because the legacies exist outside the focus. This could just be anything about what happened in play as a reprieve. Um, so I'm going to take, uh, Gisadel, um, takes Silverguard and establishes, um, highly competitive, um, mage academies. So here we start seeing like very very prestigious like elite schools and stuff. She basically turns um, the city into a very like cruel uh, majocracy, 
And, sure. Um, yeah, that's all. That's all I, I, I'm cool with sharing with for now. That's a very uh, hard her... fist for a tyrant. Yeah. Right. Education. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I think that's her masterpiece is, is um, training mages. Like that's her. What that, that was always her talent. Um, so she she establishes uh, competing mage academies. She she gives them all part of uh, her own knowledge and makes them have to fight about with each other. Sure. Um, so I I don't want to say that's the source of magic, but that could, like I also don't want that to be a chosen one kind of thing. Are we okay with that? Are we okay with with her doing that? And in a way for her to avoid um, like too much power being aggr like uh, aggregated in mages. Right. Well, she's like one of the few like yeah. Well, she's Magic. ruling it, like right, like this is right. this is actually a way of her ruling over the next sets of mages, so no one can gets, no one can threaten her position, is that she has these mage schools and they all get like kind of good, but since they all don't have the all the secrets that she does, um, they like can never really get as good as she can, right? So they're like that's and, a so sure. like it, no matter it's, how it's, good it's, they it's a net like, yeah it's a net positive of of the academies her. and stuff, but like her system of the yeah. mage academies and like the highly high competitiveness. And uh, rivalries that exist um, makes it yeah. so there can never be a successor to her. That's not yeah. really a chosen one situation. Yeah, I, I wasn't. Yeah. I didn't think. I didn't feel it was, but I I could understand uh, a case for it, and I, I wanted to make sure that yeah. we're all okay with. Yeah, it. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, cool. people would only uh, learn the skills of like that Jezebel had. Like she's only the master of like one form of magic, right? Yeah. Um. Yeah, I guess. Sure. Because we had characters like Desmond, who were like the champion of light magic. Yeah, uh, I guess she's the co- the champion of like summoning magic. Hmm. Because that's why she made tea and teleported. Sure. So, um, cool. So that would be my legacy, and that means we are done this first focus, uh, and we're also about time for our second break. So when we come back, uh, Sai will make our second focus for the game. All right. So All right. Thank we'll you so think much. about that yeah. over the break. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in. We'll be back at, in about eight minutes. Uh, I appreciate it so much for you guys sticking around and, and enjoying this game. And I'm loving it. Uh, getting, I'm loving reading and seeing all your guys' input and suggestions and thoughts on the game. It's super cool. So thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you in seven minutes.